Hello. In this tutorial, I'll be introducing how to use ray tracing in Notch and also how to use path tracing and denoising um, in the context of a relatively simple scene. So let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is build uh, quite a simple scene out of cloner, just a grid of boxes. So um, first thing I'm going to use is a cloner, drag the cloner into the graph. And I can link that to the root just by hitting Control R and it will automatically link to the root. Now we need something to clone. So I'm going to use uh, Shape 3D. Drag that in and link the Shape 3D so it's parented to the cloner. Let's go to the cloner here. At the moment, this is um, you set to iterative cloning. Let's make a grid. So I'm going to change the mode to 3D grid. You can see now I've got a 3x3 three three grid of um, spheres. So instead of a uh, 3x3x3x3 three by three by three by three grid, let's make a 16x1x16 by by 16 grid and space those properly. You can see now I've got a nicely spaced grid of spheres. And instead of a sphere, I'm going to use a rounded box. If I view the normals now, you can see, um, you see what we've got here. We've just got a grid of beveled rounded boxes. And the, the bevel's a little large, so let's just uh, bring that in. And uh, this triangle counts slightly excessive. If we look at wireframe mode, we don't need all those triangles for that bevel. So let's drop the uh, subdivisions down. And now we've got our nice grid of boxes. And uh, to make them look slightly more interesting, I'm going to um, randomize their heights towards the center. So I'm going to use a randomizer vector, which you just link to the cloner just by hitting Control R. It'll auto link to the cloner. And if I uh, so I'm just going to scale the boxes towards the center. So if I just go down here, I can go to the scale Y and uh, boost that value up. You notice I'm, I'm holding down Alt. So although I've hit the end of the slider, as I keep dragging, it allows me to keep going. Let's pump that up to about five. A bit more. There we go. So now I've got a nice um, randomly offset grid. And uh, I can use the fall off to bring those uh, in. So let's drop the fall off down. So it's more towards the center and pump up the fourth power to shape it. So that's more, um, we've got a nice grid of boxes um, shaped into the middle. So now we start lighting this scene. So let's get out of normal view. And we, in order to start lighting, we're gonna light this with area lights to give a nice soft look. So I'm gonna use uh, deferred rendering needs to be turned on, high dynamic range needs to be turned on. And I'm going to work in linear space. So I'm going to turn on linear space lighting as well. Now I'm going to bring in an area light. So let's bring in an area light. And I'm going to use the, uh, the change the fall off mode on the area light to um, physical fall off. That's just my preference. And uh, I'm link the area light to the root. Control R as usual. And now um, you see I've already, this area light's already in the scene. I can move it around. So let's position that somewhere suitable. So I'm just gonna put that so it's um, just offset in Y and uh, in Z. So it's kind of somewhere above the scene to one side. And let's give it a bit of a pitch down. So it's uh, tilted onto the scene. Now, um, in order to boost, I'm gonna boost that brightness right up. So let's just whack it up to 25. And uh, I'm going to give it a little tint. So we're kind of in the orange kind of world there. I'm going to do another light on the other side. So um, create a classic of two point lighting. So let's just copy and paste that area light. Control C, Control V, Control R to link it to the root. And this one is going to go uh, over the other side. So let's just shift it in X, like so. And uh, we need to spin it around. So let's spin that heading round. And, uh, and there we have it. And let's give that one a tint more into the blues. Not the purples, the blues. And you can see now we've got a simple lighting setup. You can see the um, classic sort of double sided, double two sided lighting. But we, um, one thing we'll obviously notice here is that while the highlights and the basic area light diffuse is working well, we're not getting any shadows from the area lights. 
So in order to get shadows out of the area lights, we need to turn on ray tracing because it requires ray tracing to do area light shadows. So to do that, we simply go into the root node, scroll down and check enabled on ray tracing. And then now if we go to the two area lights, notice how I'm selecting both of them so I can edit their properties both at once. And just check on ray traced. And instantly I'm getting shadows for my two area lights now. And that's working nicely. One thing you'll notice is as I move around, you get a noisy looking image. And uh, when I stop moving, it settles and it quickly refines into a smooth image. You can see the refine steps in the bottom corner here. And this is because um, refine renders turned on, which is control shift R. So if I turn that off, then the image never refines and it stays noisy. So let's just whack that on. So what this shows is these ray trace scenes, they take a bit of time to get a clean render. They have to refine, but you can interact with them and work with a noisy render so you can work and see what you're doing. Right, so uh, the next thing, at the moment, um, so I've got two direct area lights with nice shadows, but I'm, I wanna kind of get some bounce lighting going. Most of this image is still very dark because it's reliant on the bounce lighting to achieve. Um, it's gonna be reliant on bounce lighting to fill in those dark areas. So in order to get bounces, I'm gonna bring in the path tracer node. Just drag that in and again, just whack it onto the root. And what the path tracer does is it calculates all the indirect lighting. So it will handle reflections, refractions, and uh, in diffuse bounces, all in a unified way, accurate way. And you can just use it with any scene with ray tracing enabled. So if I turn off ray tracing, all of the ray tracing effects go away. So I've got a very quick, uh, fast render to work with. Let's whack it back on and it's all there. It's still pretty quick, actually. It's still very quick to refine. It's just n it's just noisy until it settles. Um, so now I've got my uh, path tracer. This is just working pretty well on the default, but um, with one diffuse bounce by default, but I'm gonna bump up to three just in case, uh, just to get a bit more. And uh, the next thing I wanna do is change the material on this cube. So it's very, um, it's a bit too shiny at the moment. It's very plasticky. So let's bring in a uh, material node and uh, whack that onto the shape 3D like so. I'm just gonna adjust the roughness of the material. So instead of a um, very sharp highlight, we're gonna have a much smoother highlight. Like so. You can see the effects of the different lighting. So if I just hide my lights, you can see um, just, the, just the bounces here, all that's being, um, all that's coming through. Put that one back on, similar with the other one. This is really quick and easy to set up. So n now, um, now we've got this is already a working um, a decent rendering scene. But we can at the moment the refining is um, just set to refine up to a large number of iterations. It just sits and goes until it hits a thousand iterations by default, and we can control that by using the RT refinement node. Let's just drag that in and link it to the root. And now uh, it, we can set the maximum number of steps. So let's choose 100 instead of 1,000. Um, so now it's ticking up. Now when it hits 100, it'll just stop. So there's still a little bit of noise left there. But what we can also enable here is there's, um, there's an option to use anti-aliasing while refining. So the, um, the, the iterations of the uh, refine will also anti-alias. So let's pop that on. We just cleaned up the edges a bit. Let's just have a quick zoom in. You can see the difference that makes if I um, uncheck that. You can see how the uh, the edges are kind of rough. And if we uh, work that on, suddenly they're much cleaner and smoother. You notice the zoom viewport button here and translate. It's just on the toolbar. Let's restore that to one to one. So with with the refinement node, at the moment we're using uh, we're using f uh, 100 iterations. So if we bump that down to say 40, get a slightly noisier image again. Um, it's super quick to refine. It's refining in a f un under a second. So it's, it's really interactive. But we can use um, AI denoising to do the rest of the cleanup. So if I check on AI denoising here, 
This will open up the, um, it will start using the Intel Open Image Denoiser by default. There's also the ability to use the Optics Denoiser as well, which is um, GPU and uh, AI, NVIDIA AI powered, whereas the Intel um, Denoiser is CPU. But you can see what this does. I, um, I have a noisy image, it refines, and then the last pop, it applies the Intel Denoiser and cleans up the image really nicely. So that's my render. Very nice. The last thing I'm gonna do is just demonstrate that we can add a little bit of animation to this. So let's go back to the cloner and add a turbulence effector as well. And if we just um, sort of whack that in, link that to the cloner, and then if we just apply a little bit of uh, offset to that, and probably it's gonna be super fast, let's bring that speed down. I'm gonna use the fall off in the same way. I guess it makes sense to uh, drag the fall off in. And if I play that, you can see that the, um, you see what happens when I'm animating. Let's get that a bit faster. So I can work with animation and noisy, noisy render, but as soon as I pause, it will quickly render and refine. And if I rendered that out to video, I could get a super clean, quick render in no time. Thank you very much. That's, that concludes a simple introduction to path tracing. <laughs>